hey, so particles in Goda are pretty cool and easy to use. And in this video, well, I wanted to go over everything there is to know about the particle 2D node from an explanation of important things to know. And then at this timestamp, we will create different in-game examples like fire, rain, and explosions. But before we get started, if you could subscribe and drop a like on this video to help YouTube push this tutorial to more aspiring game devs, then it would mean the absolute world to me. But how does the particle node work? So first of all, there are two different nodes, the GPU particle 2D and the CPU particle 2D. And most of the time you're going to want to use the CPU particle 2D, unless you're wanting to spawn tons of particles, because in that case, then you want to use the GPU particle 2D since it uses the GPU and in turn will help the game in performance. If you're using the CPU particle 2D, then you may see a dip in performance when spawning a high number of particles because it won't be using the GPU. So particles can be used for so many different things from explosions, fire, rain, and so much other stuff. And I want to take the time here to go over how to create those different effects step by step and explain the inspector and all the options the particle node has. So you're able to go and create anything that you need with a particle node. So let's get started by creating an explosion effect. And to do this, we're going to create a 2D scene and we can just name this scene the explosion because that's what it's going to be. That's the effect that we're going to create. And then we're going to go here and then we're going to add a particle 2D. So a CPU particle 2D is what we're going to be using. And you can see that we're already spawning particles. But for an explosion, well, there's going to be a couple things that we're going to have to change, like the gravity, right? So if we come to the gravity and we click it to zero, you're going to see it's going to stop falling completely. If we set it to a negative number, well, you're going to see it's going to go up. If we set it to a number, it's going to go down right and we want to add zero for an explosion because we want it to go in all the directions we don't want it to tell in a certain direction you know a certain amount so we won't do that and then we're going to go into time and for an explosion there's this explosiveness little number here and this obviously as of now doesn't do anything but if we turn our gravity up let's say we have our gravity at 100 you're going to see that when we change explosiveness how it works right so that's going to release them at different times but this is going to release them all at once. So that has eight particles and each one of these particles, you see that's eight particles falling. And that's what we want for an explosion, right? But we're going to want them to all go at the same time and go different ways, but we're going to want them to be different sizes, right? So to do that, we can come down here to the scale and we can change the scale and you can see this is going to be scaled too. They're all going to be scaled up to two. Or if we go to four, you're going to see it's going to choose a random scale but we're going to actually have to change this explosiveness so we can see it. You can see that they're all different sizes, right? All of the pieces are different sizes. We're going to turn explosiveness off for now, but you can see they're all different sizes. And if we want them to fade and get smaller, right? Because now they're all just going to disappear and they're going to be solid the whole time. If we want them to like get smaller as they go down, well, because like an explosion, you're going to want it to get smaller. You don't want it to stay the same size the entire explosion. We can come down here to our scale and we're going to have a scale amount rank here. And if we click a new curve we can click on it, and if we right click at number one, well, it's going to stay the exact same because whenever it spawns, whenever it spawns in, it's going to be equal to times one of its scale. So the number is going to stay the same. But if we come down here, then it's going to be equal to times, right? It's going to fade and it's going to go down here and it's going to be equal to whatever this is. So maybe this is like times 2.5 of, of the fade, right? So it's going to take this number and it's going to go to 2.5 times whatever its original scale is. And it's going to get smaller as it goes down. As you can see, if we go all the way up, well, it's going to stay the same. If we come down, well, it's going to fade into absolutely nothing. But we'll go somewhere around this area just like that. And it doesn't really look good now, but it will look good here in a second if we fix up some stuff. So let's change gravity back to zero. Let's go back up to the top. Let's turn on our explosiveness up to a lot, you know, the biggest that it can do. And then in our direction, I want to go here. Where's our direction? I want to go here and I want to move this spread up. And then we're going to go into our initial velocity. This is the one that matters the most. This is what's going to actually be the uh, entire movement. If we set this to, we'll say 50, you're going to see that it has a little explosion. But they are all going to go the exact same distance. If we set the max of it, let's set the max, let's set the minimum velocity to 50, and then let's set the maximum velocity to 100. And you're going to see now some of them are going to go farther than, the, uh, than others, right? And that's what we're going to want for a little uh, explosion and it looks like an explosion but there's not many particles so if we go up here to the top we can set the particles to about 60 and you're gonna see how that looks and you can see that these go forever and they look very very like it, it, this is a big this is like a firework this is a huge explosion so to fix this we can go to our lifetime we can cut that in half you're gonna see it's a quicker explosion it's quicker and it's it's more dense and it's right there and that looks like a pretty good explosion. Maybe we can up the, the particle amount, but you don't really need to up the particle amount because I think it's pretty good at 60, not six, not six, but 60. 
and then that looks good so now if we go and we add a script to our explosion we can add a script here and this script is going to basically just turn on and off our explosion so all this is going to do is if we click enter it's going to turn the explosion on so we can say input dot is action just pressed ui accept and we can say something like the cpu particle 2d dot emitting is going to equal to true we can save the scene and we can save the script we can go to our particle 2d here and we're going to go to our time one more time we're going to turn this to one shot because as you can see if it's on one shot well we're going to have to turn emitting on for it to explode then emitting is going to go off automatically on its own if it's not on one shot and emitting is on then it's going to just keep looping and over and over so if we turn one shot on just like this and then we go and we play the explosion scene every time we click enter you're going to see it's going to be way up here because it's going to be kind of small so to fix that camera 2d set the camera 2d zoom to five and if we play and we click enter you're going to see that is a explosion and that looks pretty good for an explosion so that's how you create an explosion but now let's go and let's create a fire effect okay so the fire effect is going to be a little bit more complex and to create this we're going to go up here we're going to create a new scene we're going to make a 2d scene and we can just name this fire so fire is going to be much much more complex than the uh the last one we're still going to use a cpu particle system here and on the cpu particle system we're going to have a bunch of different stuff so first of all our gravity we're going to want it to go up right it's fire so gravity if we set it to like negative 600 you're going to see now the gravity is going to go up and our particles are going to also go up at the same time now you can kind of see it emits from exactly one point so if we go to our emission shape we can change our emission shape to a rectangle if it does that then let's say we expand it you kind of see that it's going to expand all around that's how we're going to create rain but from a rectangle we do not want a rectangle we're going to go make a spear and a spear is going to have a spear so if we change the radius here and we can change the radius to maybe like 10 you can kind of see that it's all going to come out from around this area down here and well for this it's going to be a pretty big amount of particles so maybe like 2000 so this is going to be a lot of particles right and you can kind of see how that looks that kind of looks like what the prototype kind of looks like just a little bit we can go down here, we can set our lifetime to maybe 0.5 so it's more dense and it doesn't go up as high because we don't want it to go up that high. And then we're going to have some other stuff. If we want it to come inwards like this, we can have it push inwards so it looks like it's all going up towards one point and that would be radical. Excel down here. So if we turn this up, we can say maybe the max, I mean the minimum is negative 40 and maybe the max is negative 40 or 50 and 40, right? So negative 50 and negative 40 you can kind of see that just so we have a little bit of different differential here you gotta see how it goes up just like this but what makes fire fire is first of all the scale we want it to shrink as it goes up so we can go fix that real quick we can come down here to the scale but then we're going to change the color and the color is going to be kind of complex right because we're going to have a gradient and it's going to fade into different colors but the scale we can say it can either be from 0.5 or it can be to i don't know maybe i guess two so it looks more dense, right? They're bigger particles and they are, or they could be smaller particles. So they could be bigger or they could be smaller. We'll, we'll leave this at 0.5, I think that's fine. And then we're gonna do the same thing that we did on the explosion. We're gonna create one of these ranks and we're gonna come down to where it fades. Not, we don't want it to fade as much as the other one, maybe like 0.4 around here. And you can kind of see that looks like fire. The only thing that we are missing is the color, right? So if we come down here, we go to color and we change the color rent rent to new gradient well we can click on this and we can change up all of these colors you can kind of see how this looks now that doesn't look too good but we can say the first color here is going to be black we want this to maybe be some sort of red and how would we make a nice looking red for a fire maybe we'll stick with this right so maybe we'll go with this and then we can add a new point here and this point is going to be a little bit of a change this point is going to be more towards the orange side right a red orange color just like this maybe more orange yeah maybe something maybe something like this right and then we're going to add another point this point is going to be more yellow orange so if we get make sure we have full orange we can come more onto the yellow side like this right that's going to be more a, of a yellow ish yellow ish orange then we can come down here and we can make this color here completely transparent just like this so it's, it's going to fade away at a better it's going to have a better flame then we can change this 
also to transparent because we don't really need that one. I didn't know that was even there. We would have just moved it forward a little bit. But you can kind of see how this looks. And the higher you want the smoke, the more you move this transparent backwards and the higher the smoke will go. So maybe right there, maybe that looks good, right? And that kind of looks like fire. Maybe we have to change up the red a little bit to make it a little bit more orangish off the start so it's not as big of a, of, of a change. Or maybe we can change this one up more towards yellow. Something like this, right? That's going to be fire. Obviously, you can play around with this. You can change it up to however you want it. Maybe we can make this more orange. Something like this. And that's going to be fire. That, that, that's fire. That looks good. Now, real quick, I want to create a toggle. So we can come up here. Well, first of all, I guess we can add a camera 2D. And the camera 2D, we can set the zoom to 5. Then we can go here and we can add a script. And this script is going to be basically the exact same. We'll just say if input dot is action just pressed UI accept. And then we'll, we'll create a quick toggle. And this toggle will be CPU, partic CPU particles dot emitting equals not that of CPU particles dot emitting, right? And we can save the scene, save the script. And then if we come back to the 2D scene, you're gonna come all the way up to the top. We don't want it on one shot and emitting, it can be emitting to start, that's fine. If we click play, you kind of see it looks more like a fire, right? That's how we would create a fire. We can turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. Just like fire should be, be able to, you know, turn on and off. And that looks pretty good. That looks very, very nice, right? So that's gonna be a fire. Now, we're going to go and create the very last effect, which is going to be rain, right? And as we're going through this tutorial, hopefully you're seeing how all the settings work and how all the settings function. The best way to learn about the particle 2D is to go through all of the inspector and just play around with it and make your own things with it. So let's go create the rain real quick, and that's going to be the last effect for this video. Okay, so now quickly to create rain, we'll go up to the top 2D scene, and we're going to name this rain. Now, this one should go a little bit faster, right? So now we're going to add a CPU particle. And real quick, just because at the end we're going to have to add a camera anyway, we'll set the camera zoom to 5. And then we'll go up here to the rain, and we're going to make the exact same as the fire script. We'll say if input that is action, uh, just press UI accept. And we'll say CPU particle 2D dot emitting equals not that of CPU particle dot emitting, right? Save, just like this. Okay. Now, to create particle 2D, well, what do we need? This is rain, right? This looks like rain, right? Well, we want rain that's falling, but we don't want it just to fall straight down because that's basic. We want it to have a little bit of a wind, a wind thing, right? So it goes this way, kind of. And to do that, we're going to have to play around with the, uh, the gravity, right? So the gravity, if we go to the gravity, this is all going to be gravity for the rain. We're going to leave this at 980. That's fine. We're going to change up the X gravity, right? So maybe negative 100. You're going to see how it's going to go an angle, right? That's going to be kind of angled, maybe ne negative 200. Just depends, right? So I think that's good. But let's say if we have gravity at 1,000. Well, I was going to say 1,000. You can kind of see how it's going to go sideways. If we have it at 2,000, which is going to be double of Y, it should go more up. And if we turn Y completely off and set Y to zero, it's going to go straight, right? So this is going to be 980. And we can go down here. We can set this to maybe negative 200 for now. We can always come back and change it depending on how it looks. And first of all, the emission shape. This is the big thing. We're going to change this to a rectangle. And we're, we're going to want this to go along the entire way of the camera. So maybe 100. I guess we're going to need a little bit more than 100. Okay, yeah. You can see it spawns all the way out here. Maybe sometimes every once in a while it'll spawn all the way out here. I just saw one and then it spawns all the way on this side as well. So... If we take our GPU particle, our CPU particle, I mean, we move this up just like this. So it's above the camera. So it looks like it's falling into the screen, right? And then we have it on rectangle. You can kind of see how it spawns all the way across. Now, if we go up here, change them out just so it's easier to see to 200. You can kind of see how it looks like rain. Maybe we move a little bit this way just because we got this bottom of the screen, right? So that's going to look a little bit more like rain. Now, this is going to go very far down, right? So we can come down here to the time. We can change up the lifetime to maybe 0.5. No, nope, it has to be a little bit longer than 0.5 because it doesn't reach the bottom. Okay, see, now it goes all the way past and it hits the bottom. So that's all we're going to need. We'll have 200. That's going to make it look a little bit more dense, though. So maybe we can go to, like, 170, maybe 160 particles, right? And I guess I guess we'll go, we'll go 150 particles, right? Okay, 150 particles, that looks fine. We'll leave it at this, right? So that's going to look good. Now, the scale, 
we want the scale we want the range to stay small so we want it to be about this small or we can set the minimum to 0.2 right so now if the minimum is 0.2 they can only be the normal size or they can be even smaller than the normal size so it's going to be 0.2 to 1 so it's just going to pick and we don't really care anything about the scale because we want them to stay the same the entire time unless they're hitting the ground which then you'd have little animations playing based on however the rain would be going which will just have a background animation playing and that would be pretty easy to do but then we're going to go to our um, color and we're going to change the color to make it some sort of color. So we go to a color. We can just make it a straight color just like this. Instead of making it like a gradient, we're just going to want a color. Maybe we can go with a little dark, a bit of a blue, something like this. Right. And that's going to be our rain. We can save the scene. We can play the scene. You can kind of see that's rain. We click enter. Rain's off. Rain's on. Rain's off. Rain's on. And you can kind of see that they're all different sizes, so it looks like it gives depth perception to the rain. And I think it looks very, very, very good. So that is going to be how you create rain with a particle 2D. That's also going to be how you create fire and explosion with a particle 2D. Just like we went and we created all of these other little things in here, like fire, which looks very nice. And explosions, which if we click enter, explodes. So that is how you use the particle 2D, and that is the you know basics of it. Now, the best way to learn, like I said, is to go through and just play around with all of the the uh, settings over here in the inspector, play around with every single thing, and then you'll get to know it quick, right? So let's say we go to our fire and, you know, we change this, right? This is not going to do anything because it's a pre-process, but if we set the speed scale, what's going to happen? Well, that's going to look weird, right? Maybe the explosiveness, what's going to happen? It's going to shoot up flames. Maybe if we do a little less explosiveness, what happens? See, so just go around, play with all the settings and see what happens to the items. And you'll be able to understand how, what things do and how things work. If you want to learn more about particles in Godot, then I'll leave a link to the official Godot documentation in the description below. And it goes over everything very, very well. Thank you so, so, so much for watching. I really hope this video was able to help in some way. And remember to subscribe and drop a like on this video to help you to push this video to more aspiring game developers who want to learn to make their own go to games as well. And until next time, stay safe and have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.